This is a gray squirrel skeleton uh, that had been cleaned by the bugs and is now um, cataloged. Th this is where the cataloging happens in this room here. This is the cataloging room. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is the ultimate storage, the fate of this particular specimen. It will be put in a case downstairs and will stay like that forever. And I mean that literally. We want this specimen to be just like this 500 years from now when you and I are dust in the wind. Because it's specimens like this that will answer uh, future uh, hypotheses or t will be available to test future hypotheses. Now the other thing that's in this room are the notes of the researchers, historical researchers that have uh, collected uh, specimens over the past two centuries basically. Mm -hmm. And there are notes in these books that might serve particular studies, um, ecological studies. Was this animal this animal that we think is new to science, what was it eating when it was collected? Uh, was it raining? Was it a full moon? All of that information could be housed in here. Okay. So this is the, uh, here's the first specimen that was cataloged at the Field Museum. This is a duckbill platypus. And the first 400 or so specimens that formed the foundation of the mammal collection here at the Field Museum were the remnants of the World Columbian Exposition, which was down at Museum of Science and Industry. And the expo, uh, the, the whole purpose of the expo was to basically bring together aspects of the world, cultural, biological, um, there, so there were, there were people from other countries, there were sp uh, mammals like duckbill platypus, uh, wallabies, kangaroos, uh, that were mounted and displayed so that mainly the Western world could come and see what the rest of the world looked like. When that expo folded up, the specimens came here, but not only did the specimens come here, so did that mentality of there's a big, wide international world out there. We know what a chipmunk or a raccoon looks like, but we, this duckbill platypus is really bizarre. Let's go out and get more. Let's figure out what makes them tick. And that's why the Field Museum, the research that goes on here at the Field Museum, is very international. It's actually ironic, but you wouldn't come here first to study Midwestern mammals you would go to the University of Illinois uh, Urbana-Champaign, for example. But uh, if you wanted to study Philippine mammals or Peruvian mammals or Tanzanian mammals, the Field Museum would be probably one of your first stops.